This world has been connected, tied to the darkness, soon to be completely eclipsed. Hello there, Sir from 17 once again. This is my Kingdom Hearts final mix, Proud Difficulty video walkthrough. This is the gummy ship, a traversal point to get to Agrabah, the land of Aladdin and Jasmine and, and Jafar and Iago and all those good people. The, the genie that's not voiced by the original genie, Robin Williams, but still a decent performance by Dan, is it Castellietto or whatever his name is, the dude who does Homer Simpson's voice, really gifted voice actor. But once again, I'm not going to be upgrading the gummy ship, and it's not because I want to torture people with these extremely slow sequences. It's just because it was something I wanted to try to see if it made much of a difference. And it does add to the walkthrough because if I did have a super well kitted out gummy ship with loads of missiles and things like that and super tons of armor, if anybody does have difficulty on these sections, it's not really going to help those people. Something just fell in my room somewhere. But. We'll have to leave that for another time. So, you're going to want to go towards the warp device here, because I'm still baffled as to what just fell. <laughs> and there's going to be a little bit of discussion between the, is it Chippendales, Chipmunks, I'm not too sure. It's been a while since I, I got the naming conventions down on all the Disney stuff. But, this is quite longer than the, the ones you've done so far, because this is the, the biggest distance that you've faced. And these little things here are kind of like suicide bomber or kamikaze pilots. They just kind of try and fly into you, so... I like to give the analog a nice little bit of a wobble, take them out nice and quickly. The only real strategy you need in the gummy ship, if there's something you don't have the firepower to kill, you want to avoid it. If you can't avoid it, you want to hold slow down on the ship and shoot it for longer. And fingers crossed it'll die. But... Nice little transition there where I paused it. <laughs> I say nice, it was terrible. Because it jumps a few frames because the pause is quite slow on this game. But I was reading an article the other day and it was got, it was talking about, you know, two things that J Grand Theft Auto V does wrong. And I'm sorry folks, as, as much as I think that game is a fantastic game and uh, I would give it a high score, it does a lot of things wrong. And you know, some of them can be, seem a little bit pedantic at times, a little bit picky, but that's the whole point of a critique of something. It's to pick out the things that could have been better. And don't get me wrong, there are some things that won't even, you know, factor into some people's choices, but there are big problems. And the two they mentioned, the first one is something I noticed immediately. And I was explaining it to my girlfriend to see if she, you know, she saw a problem with it. And even. You know, my girlfriend, who admittedly doesn't play these kind of games, doesn't really game all that much, and her gaming experience is, you know, a little bit of this and that that I'm playing, and, and Peggle, and, and Candy Crush, or whatever it's bloody called on the phone, and then a couple of Guitar Hero games, so she's not this big hardcore gamer, but even she saw the detriment of this shooting mechanic, which is where you hold aim, the character brings the gun up, and you don't see a reticle until the gun is fully extended in a finished, you know, animation. And it's unacceptable because it makes the aiming really loose and really bad. And this is on a game where the aiming is, is interesting to say the least anyway. And when you bear in mind that Rockstar released Max Payne, which did not have this issue and had significantly better aiming, it doesn't make any sense why they would do it. Now the second thing that they criticised was the map. And admittedly, I think the delay when you access the map is, is just unforgivable. Because the whole point in maps when you're finding collectibles or you need to check it quickly is to have it swift. It needs to be, you know, prompt. And it's not. There's a lag to it. So I was with them on that one. And then they said it wasn't very useful because it's it's kind of archaic and old considering that, you know, sandbox games have changed over the years. Which I do kind of agree with as well. But it was funny because when I was checking the, the comments on this thread, I think it was a games radar page. But everybody was hating on this article because... You know, they're all deluded idiots who seem to think Grand Theft Auto V is perfect when it's an absolutely amazing game, but it has a lot of jankiness. You know, this game does so much, it can't all be perfect. That's just the nature of the beast. And these people that delude themselves because they, they have to go into this almost, you know, this, this self-martyring position to stand up for this game, like almost on principle, it just seems really, really silly. But did you see that just then, that this new enemy did? The, uh, the turban-wearing... You know, scimitar-wielding Arabian guys, Arabian Heartless, which the name is something I'm going to find. 
so I can call them by their real name. So just bear with me, guys. We'll do some name dropping. Uh, where is he? It's interesting how they log the enemies in here. You would think. Interesting. So we've got everything but this guy. Where the hell is he? What? That's kind of strange, that guy. I can't seem to see him anywhere. Let me just push on a little bit further through this. I mean, there has to be an explanation, right? They're the main enemy on this level, and they're actually very difficult. They're one of the, the tougher Heartless in the game. What? Right, from the very beginning, is it? It's literally not here. Let me go to the section of Agrabah in the book. See what it says. Right, they're called bandits. Clever. Why were they not on that back page? Weird. But they're bandits. See if we can find them now. We know the bloody name. Bandit. Bandit. Ah, there we go. I'm blind. Can't see the forest for the damn trees, John Denver style. Uh, but Agrabah on the level, as far as what you're watching right now, it's a bit of a maze, guys. You're gonna. You're going to explore, you're going to release the carpet, you're going to go and save Aladdin, you're going to come back with Aladdin, you're going to face Jafar, you're going to see him in a cutscene, then you're going to go back to where you were where you found Aladdin. It's a lot of backtracking back and forth, and it can be really confusing, and it doesn't help that I'm removing the cutscenes, so you're not seeing the, you know, the mortar that keeps the bricks together. So, just, just stay patient and realise that a lot of the, the keys that open the gateways don't lead to anything but treasures. You know, the plot is, is behind very specific doors that are quite obvious. But the bandit has 39 HP, 18 strength, 15 defense, and he gives 7 experience. He drops money, and he drops HP, and his item drop is a 2% chance for a potion, a 4% chance for a blaze gem, and a 0.5% chance for a protera chain, which is the upgraded protect chain, which is quite useful, I guess. So something to keep your eye on. But I'm currently on a massive Kingdom Hearts kick, as you, you might be able to tell with these videos. Uh, I'm playing through Chain of Memories and I'm having a, a lot of fun with it. Uh, I've started immediately on Proud and I've never played this game before, so at first I just I just couldn't get my head around some of the mechanics, like stacking the cards, but then you lose them and, you know, what was the best way to do them and the whole numbered cards, the higher the card, you know, the the higher yours needs to be to get a successful attack and card breaks. And there's a lot of lingo and mechanics but once you start to grasp it a little bit it's really simple but interesting and deep and I'm having a lot of fun with it I've just gotten up to I've just done Alice in Wonderland so I'm on the world after that in Castle Oblivion so I'm having fun with that and I'm also having fun because it's giving me bits of the story that I didn't know because I believe it's a prequel to Kingdom Hearts 2 and it's telling you why Sora was asleep and it's also explaining a little bit about Organization 13 so it's you know, I am very late to the party on this info, but it's to me it's new and fresh and I'm, I'm enjoying it. That right there I just picked up was Dark Matter. It is the bane of this game. It can only be synthesized or found or won. And there are limits to, to where it's found and where it's won. So you can only have so much of it, which means if you're trying to do all the synthesis, which I did yesterday, I got the ultimate weapon and did all the weapons, got the trophies and all that good stuff, you're going to have to make a lot of that, and it involves getting Mithril, which you would think Mithril would be easy to get, but the drop on it is ridiculous. And to synthesize Mithril, you have to get Mithril Shards, and once again, you would think the drop on that would be easy, but they aren't. And out of all the farming I did, the Mithril was the worst, because I had to use the Bambi ability in the final area, and even then, there's only a 30% chance of it dropping. It took forever, guys, and that was after I tried doing it right at the end in the final rest area which just didn't work because nothing dropped anything after an hour and then I started farming the behemoth character which was dropping but it was almost one in every five enemy kills which is not good considering it was a, a five minute round trip like the amount of farming you're gonna have to do I don't know if it's because I'm older and I'm acknowledging that this is time of my life I will never get back or what but uh, I'm just not willing to put it in anymore like when I was a kid just didn't care. I would waste weekends 
without blinking, you know, farming and doing that kind of stuff. And, and nowadays, I just I don't have the patience for it. So I was, it was winding me up. But the cool thing is, I recorded a lot of my toils. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a, a final mix synthesis guide where I'm going to show you the enemy in the journal. Then I'm going to show you where it is. And then I'm going to show you the, the technique I use to farm. And I'm probably going to make them separate videos so you can find the one that you, you need. And it's going to make getting all those unique stones and some of those trickier items that you need to use a lot just maybe a little bit easier because I had a big old pain finding them. And after a while, I was using, you know, Google to try and find lists and facts and wikis and things. And even then, there was conflicting information because of the differences between the original Kingdom Hearts and the final mix release. Like... The amount of threads that don't know the correct locations for the Dalmatians is amazing because they change them. And then when I look in my book, which is for the original Kingdom Hearts, they're in different places, so there's a lot of subtle differences. And I, I just actually found all the Dalmatians and, and got Aroga, which is a very good spell. And I've also just beaten Kurt Zisa on Proud. It was my first attempt. The only bit of the fight I didn't like was the fact that I didn't map any magic to my shortcuts and on the second phase you have to destroy your shields, that takes forever. I beat Phantom on Proud, recorded that, my first victory over him on the high def collection. That went really smooth up until the end where I got caught by an attack that I'd spent the entire video dodging and for some reason I assumed it had despawned and it didn't and I didn't have cure customised to my quick spells so if it wasn't for Goofy or Donald throwing me a healing item probably would have died so that'll be an interesting one to, to commentate and then I I did Ice Titan and I recorded that so you'll be seeing that shortly he's a bastard on Proud man he's such a spammy get I just it's not a fun fight at all uh, you can use gravity on him to do some damage and deflect his icicles to, to stun him but then when you go in to attack him because he's got so much life and because he moves around so much you barely get a chance to do any damage and it takes it takes forever and I remember him being easy, so either I'm really shit at Kingdom Hearts now, or Proud is just that much more difficult, because he gets super aggressive. But back on topic here, folks, this is a tough room filled with bandits, but you'll notice we've now got this move, and uh, I can't quite remember its name. It's saying Rave when we're dashing about. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to double-check the book to, to find the, the specific name of that ability. But it's the first unique skill that Sora's learnt. And it uses MP, but it's really useful and it's super powerful. And as you can see, when you're locked onto enemies, Sora just dashes back and forth doing stingers. And you'll kill these enemies really quickly. And the cool thing about it is you're completely invulnerable when you're doing it. So, let's find it, shall we? It's called Sonic Blade. So I'm not too sure why it's called that, but it is one of my favourite abilities on the game because it's you get it quite early, and if you're ever fighting an enemy that hits you a lot or that you're not comfortable with fighting and you don't want to learn them, use that. And those iframes are going to save you. The, the fact that it's super damaging is going to save you. And it's, it's also a move that if you don't know how to dodge an attack and you don't have any damage on you so you can't use the heal and haul the iframe or you can't just heal through it by, by timing... You can use that move to use those invulnerability frames to, to get away from danger. And I'm going to use a technique like that against Sephiroth in my proud Sephiroth victory that I captured yesterday. Because if you spam one of those techniques where you throw the Keyblade, I think it's called Strike Raid, you can literally just keep chucking elixirs and, ch and doing that move. And you can kill him by pressing one button. And I never realised you could cheese him that hard. And I don't do it in the video because I wanted you to, such, to show an actual fight. But I'm tempted to do a cheesy one because it's just so powerful. But thanks for watching, and you take care now.